brother, I'm so happy to see you. And here's what I hoped for the most. I hoped that the beard would grow more epic in lockdown. And by George, it has. Zach oh, Wild. Yeah, I love you. Gone. I miss yeah, you. The kids don't, yeah, the kids don't recognize me. But, you know, but yeah, without a doubt. So if, if I shaved it off. Actually, Sabbath, yeah, he's only seen me with, it's, it's when he sees me with pictures without it, he, he recognized, obviously, he knows who I am, but I mean, it's just like, because uh, he's eight now, but uh, yeah. He knows he's, who you are, but he doesn't, he doesn't know that dad. Beard. Yeah, he, wa he wants bearded dad. He wants, well, first of all, I thought back to how long ago I first came in contact with you. I mean, we're talking like Zyrus days. So like Zyrus and Ozzy and Pride and Glory when you guys were at Clam and Jam and Black Label and like Zach Sabbath. I have such a long history with you. When I think about it, I feel like I age myself and I date myself. But I go, man, I think of how long I've known Zach Wilde and what an artist you have evolved into. You know, I was reading that book uh, recently, that Nothing But A Good Time, that 80s book, and yeah, you were quoted in it. And you know, it pissed me off a little bit because I felt like Jersey wasn't as well represented in that book. We had our own Sunset Strip along Route 35, you know, for a lot of years. And, yeah, you know, I saw you know, play in local bands mm. and we had some good talent that came out of Jersey, you know, and our own little 35, you know, strip there of people. No, it was, I mean, it, I, I came in right near the end, but I mean, before that, when the drinking age was like 18, I mean, the stories back then, yeah, I mean, I think there's somebody wrote a book about that, but uh, like the whole, you know, the whole Jersey scene and everything like that. Well, I mean, cause you had Twisted Sister, T.T. Quick, White Tiger, uh, Prophet. You had, I mean, all these Zebra, you had like all these insane bands. Fountain I, I came Casino, in. baby. Friday yeah. night's Fountain Casino, Twisted Sister in the big room. Totally. Always a good time. You're talking like 2,000, 3,000 seaters. Yep. It's almost like basically like an arena show in the clubs back then. Yeah. But the, the drinking age was 18. So, uh, yeah, I had friends that were, that were around back then, and they, they said it was unbelievable. You know, I, I mean, I could, I, I could just imagine, you know, like when I came out – and I started playing with Oz in 80, when I came out here in 87. Uh, it was like late 86, 87 or something like that. But it was just like Guns N' Roses was just starting to break. And you had L.A. Guns, you had Faster Pussy, you had all those bands going on back then. But like going to the clubs back then, like everybody was going to see bands just say they saw them before they got signed. And, you know, I mean, so basically the vibe was super – it was just exciting and electric and, you know, I, I wouldn't, you know, obviously I wasn't around and hate Asbury, but I could only imagine it, it was like, it was a scene. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like in Seattle when, when all the bands, everybody yeah, was going Yeah, we out had our scene. We had our scene. Your friends would pick you up. My friends would be like, I'll pick you up 1130, <clears throat> quarter to 12. Like you'd go out at 1130 and start to yeah. see all like these, you know, these band sets and stuff. So yeah, I look back to our history and I'm just like, man, I've known Zach for such a long time. And congratulations on just a dynamite box set. The uh, None More Black box set, nonemoreblackboxset.com if you yeah, want to check it out. Yeah, because there is None More Black than this box set. So that's yeah, the, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, when it, so when it came and I'm looking at it, 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 it blew my mind. First of all, it is so incredibly put together, so beautifully put together. It was bigger than me. I'm 90 pounds. This thing's got to weigh 20 pounds. I needed somebody to help lift it, bring it into the office. It's 120 pounds. Yes. It's exactly. huge. <laughs> um, but it's got all your, you know, all the uh, full-length studio records. It's got the song remains the same, uh, uh, not the same volume two. There's just so much material for remastered, people. Remastered, reupholstered, recarpeted, remarried. Refurbished, yes. re-everything. Yes, so yes, what re was it like for you to look back on that whole body of work for yourself, you know, during lockdown and say, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this together. I love the, the song remains not the same volume too. Um, there's, it's so great. There's so much great stuff on it. Um, and you're putting all this together during lockdown and you're giving like the fans some extra treats in there. You know, they got the, the demolition squad back patch and you got the bottle opener. And it almost reminded me of what we love to do when we were growing up getting music and you'd open stuff up and you'd be like, Oh my God, you know, you take the Zeppelin record, you put water on it and the colors change. And we had such yeah, a, totally. an experience, you know? Yeah. Without a doubt. I mean, no, it was just, uh, it is pretty funny. I mean, I'm just saying, like, you know, when the band, when Black Level started in 98, 
that you know, I, you know, I'm in, in the Black Vatican in the studio. I have, you know, like I have all my old guitar player magazines and everything like that, but I have a, there's a Keith Richards one in there. Keith's on the cover and it says, Keith Richards, 16 years with the Rolling Stones. And they're going on their 60th anniversary, <laughs> right? In 2022. So I was just thinking to myself, 16 years, and like Black Label's been around now, what, going on, what, 22 years or whatever. It's just yeah. like... I'm just thinking to myself, 16 years, like that was a, that was a milestone because no bands, rock bands were around for 16 years back then. You know, the lifespan of a rock band back then was like eight to 10 years is that it was 10 years was pushing it. So at 16 and then there were 16 years, I'm thinking like black labels been around longer than that. So, I mean, uh, no, it just, it really is amazing. Cause I'm sure if you ask Keith Richards what it was like back in 1962 when they started the band, he would say, Zach, I remember like it was yesterday. It doesn't seem that long ago. You know, I, I mean, when they were playing. So I got to tell you, you ask Paul McCartney, or what it was like playing when he played Chase Stadium. He'll say, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Because same thing with my father. When he turned 80, my dad's a World War II vet, D-Day, Omaha Beach, and everything like that. He would just go, man, yeah, well, son, you can only turn it 40 twice. <laughs> so, but I remember him like saying like he – he can't like to him world war ii and omaha you know normandy didn't seem that long ago you know what i mean he was just like it doesn't you know because he felt fine and everything like that but he was just uh he's like wow time flies you know what i mean yeah absolutely you know time you get to a certain point in your life i think and a year goes by and it's like five years goes by as one and then it's almost like 10 years goes by as one you know it just and but you remember everything the same uh who plays with uh, John Fogarty. Oh yeah, Kenny, uh, legendary drummer and everything like that. Kenny, Amazing. Uh, I, even Kenny was just talking about. I saw him on one of his Instagram posts. He just, I guess they just did a show not that long ago, and it was their first show they did in 13 months. And but he said he goes, it feels like we were home for a month and we just did a show. Like you know what I mean? Like we took yeah. a break for a month. Yeah. And and here we are, 13 months later. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, like I said, we were on the road when we were doing, um, we did our last show. We were rolling, I guess we were with the rave, I guess with the Milwaukee chapter of the almighty black label out there. And uh, yeah. we did that show and the next day we were all going home. Yeah. I, I remember we were like, ah, we'll be home for probably a month and then we'll be back out. And we were scheduled to go back. You know, we were thinking we were going to go in, back out in August. And yeah. that was yeah. the last show, man. I was just like, wow. And we've been home ever since. I want to tell you, you know what I have too? I have my, I call it my sister hoodie because it's my black label, my girls, you know, my sisterhood hoodie. Oh, there you go. You know, oh, I love it. It's like this one, my motorhead one, you know, two of my, two of the greatest hoodies ever. I, I, I live in them. Um, but yeah, let's talk about, I want to talk about the fan base and I want to talk about you as an artist because you are um, very underrated. And I say that in a way where I think when people look at your songwriting, you're my metal Greg Allman, man. I hear that emotion and that soul in the voice. Um, everybody knows your guitar playing is unique. Your own sound, everyone knows about the Zack Attack, but you're, su- you're such a diverse artist and there's so much that you can do, whether it's stripped completely down, um, which gets right down into my soul when I hear you play acoustically and when I hear your vocals like that, or whether you're just, you know, you've got the video for Heart of Darkness and of course the, the epileptic warning, you know, before the video, which is my favorite thing ever. I'm like, this is so Zach Wild. Like, I, I can't even take it. But you, um, you know, there's such a diversity with you. When people think of Zach Wild, they're just like, oh, he's an ama- amazing guitar player, crazy crazy man amazing on stage but there's so much that you can do do you look back on the career and do you think man you know what um i've done so much in the 30 something well, years the diversity thing that's the re- one of the reasons what was the uh that sealed the deal for barbara ann when uh when i asked her to, you know if she would marry me she once she saw that i do dishes laundry <laughs> and i vacuum as well she was just like i i think i <laughs> You know what I mean? So, so it, they, but you know, I probably, if I didn't have that, and that was another reason why with Oz, you know, when I auditioned, it was like, exactly, well, you, that's the guitar playing's okay. But I mean, like, but the fact that I could do dishes, laundry, I could vacuum <laughs> the sub, and you know, uh, 
that was definitely what gave me a, an advantage over the other guitar players. <laughs> over the other applicants. Yeah, it wasn't so much that I could play better than anybody. It was the fact that I could get, you know, stains out of the linens and stuff like that, you know, <laughs> and, so, and then I could, clean, you know, keep the sub nice and clean. So that was what really uh, made Ozzy decide to go with me. And, you know, and you can act and you've got a great sense of humor, as we see. I, I love the infomercial for this. It's very Ron Popeil. You know, you it's it's incredible. Did you you must have thought of this, correct? And was this done uh, all in your house? Somebody was like, do you have somebody writing this stuff? I go, no, I go, it's it's a gift. That's another thing I told Barb. I go, this is another thing I have to offer. She <laughs> said, wait, I might have to reconsider this marriage thing. Then. <laughs> if this is another thing you're offering. But uh, no, it's just, we're just having a good time, you know? I want to talk about lockdown with you because I read an interview with you and it was pretty interesting because you said, you know what? I'm going to be honest. Lockdown didn't suck as much as I thought it would. I've been on the road for so long spent time with the kids, got to do some family time that I probably would not have done. So what was the year like personally for you? I, I think a lot of people I actually were able to connect with their families or whatever, you know what I mean? Because I'm saying once the grind is going and, you know, the hustle and the bustle, you're just, before you know you, you wake up and then you're rolling and the next thing you know, it's time to go to bed again. You know what I mean? And you're just like, man, the whole day, man they just flew by or whatever, you know, just cause you're so busy doing stuff, but, uh, cause of the grind and deadlines and everything like that. So, um, no, for me, I mean, it was the longest I've been home probably 20 plus years. Yeah. Cause otherwise I'm, you know, between black label playing with the boss, Zach Sabbath, rolling with the fellas with generation X. And then yep. when I'm on Experience, um, Hendrix. Experience Hendrix, you go out on so, Experience Hendrix, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm home for like probably a week, tops, two weeks, and then and I'm back out on the road again, you know. And I, you know, I wouldn't change my situation for anything, I mean, because I love it. So I love every night when we get up on stage, it's, it's the best. So I, I'm truly blessed in that regard that I, you know, you're doing what you love. So, um, no, but I mean, when I'm home, I cherish that time I'm home, you know, when I, whether I get two weeks or I get a week or whatever, I just, I love being home. So that is the vacation. Yeah. Being in my house, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, being asleep on my own bed, but I mean, but the whole thing is, uh, yeah, that, you know, I mean, now, now I can add to my list, uh, you know, I told Barbara and I said, have you ever slept with a professional dog walker? <laughs> and I go, now's your chance. <laughs> Yeah, because now I walk the dogs every day. So, you know, I'm a professional dog walker. I can add the list it. of dishes, laundry, cleaning the dog run, vacuuming. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. I love it. I love it. And, you, you know, your relationship with Oz is so great and so unique. Uh, 30, uh, we're like on 33, uh, 33 years with Oz. You're, you're his longest running guitar player, obviously, other than Tony Iommi. Um, you know, and it's always seemed like family for you. you I, I see it kind of like a almost like a father son, you know, the things that, you know, dad does sometimes that you're just like, Oh, I can't believe dad is doing this. Yet you have the utmost respect and love in your heart for dad. You know, um, that relationship is great and unique. And I can't wait to see you guys, you know, I hope we get that 2022 tour because, you know, it's really <laughs> more like a corrupted it. older brother. Yeah. Cause I mean, <laughs> actually with our kids, the age difference is pretty much the same. There's like 20 years apart, you know what I mean? Between our, our, daughter our oldest daughter ray and our and sabbath page you know so uh yeah there's like 20 years there's a 20 year gap in between there but i mean but the whole thing is uh yeah with ozzy no it's, it's awesome he's the old you know our oldest son he's the godfather of him yeah so yeah but i, I mean my relationship with oz is just uh you know i mean if ozzy oz and mom would go out and they had some business stuff they had to deal with. And they were like, Zach, do us a favor. Can you make sure you feed the dogs for three days and just bring some milk and eggs over? It's just like, yeah, no problem. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's bigger than music. So, I mean, whether we're jamming together or not or whatever, it's just, you know, we still keep in touch. I mean, you know, whether it's birthdays, Father's Day, or oh, did you hear what's going on or whatever? He's like, yeah, I can't believe this or that or whatever, you know? So, um, no, it's all good, man. Yeah. Yeah. And new black label. I hear we're getting some new black label music. Obviously you've taken some lockdown time to write some stuff and, and maybe get into the studio. So working on a new record, maybe have it by the fall. Uh, what we're talking about, what we're actually wrapping it up right now. We're going to master it on, uh, Oof. 
on the 10th. And then um, I think we're talking about putting it out in November. So, Ooh, you know, nice. yeah. So we're, like you said, we're, we're doing Sturgis with Black Label in August. Then in, uh, I think it's, was it the beginning of October through the end of November in the state. So maybe we roll with the Jersey chapter in there somewhere. I hope so. I don't have the dates in front of me, but uh, then after that, I guess we're doing go home and get ready after Christmas. I guess we do a black label Christmas, New Year's Eve run. And we end up with the uh, Arizona chapter on New Year's Eve. And then after that, um, I'm not sure what the dates are after that. You know, whether Canada, we can go up to Canada. You know, if everyone's vaccinated, then you can go up there. So, but I know uh, Donington over in, uh, in England, the big festival over there. That's, we're scheduled to play on that um, in 2022. So hopefully everything will be opened up in Europe as well. Yeah. And it's so bizarre because, you know, we're already like almost halfway through 2021. So when people are thinking of like 2022 festivals and stuff, it's not really that far away, you know, especially if we get our, our fall touring going on here in the States and uh, so looking forward to seeing you guys. Oh, out yeah. I mean, well, well, you just hope, you know, everybody gets the, uh, the shot or whatever and then yep. like, you know, get a flu shot and everybody's better again, you know, so then everybody can come out and, and uh, have a good time again. So, yeah. you know, and, now, and like you said, everybody start working again and everybody start taking care of their families and, and all that good stuff. Getting back out there and, and doing what we do. And congratulations on a great box set, man. It's a beautiful, amazing rock and body of work. And I'm, I'm so proud of you. And it's always so awesome to see you. And I mean, we'll put it this way. You're gonna, it makes a great gift for somebody, but also it also makes a great gift. Like, put it this way. If you have somebody in your life that you like, like, I can't stand that person. I want to get the toxic. I want to get him out of my life. You give them this box set and then they go, wow, you really hate me, don't you? <laughs> you really can't stand me. And then it'll just get them out of your life. You know And I, I mean? got to say, too, the vinyl that comes with this, uh, the... Uh, the studio albums that are the vinyl are just incredible, yes. just absolutely incredible, man. It is so one for the collection. Um, you get. Well, you I, I tell you Barb that. that I showed her the vinyl and I said, "Would you like to rub my shoulders now?" I said, "They're pretty proud, <laughs> aren't they?" I said, "Can I get a shoulder rub now?" It didn't work. But uh, <laughs> anyways, thank you. Uh, Zach, numoreblackboxset.com. Pick up yours. Uh, it's a must-have for the rock fan. I was so excited when I got mine in the mail. I was like, yes, the box set is here. And um, cranking it, the tunes have done wonders for me this year. Because Great. not being able to, you know, be out there and kind of do what we do. You know, we're at the radio station. We're like you guys. You know, we're a contact sport. We're not a at home behind the computer screen necessarily sport. So uh, we have missed it. And that music has powered me through. And when I got this box set, uh, man, I'll tell you, uh, blew me away. Blew my doors off. So when I heard you were available to do this, I was like, when can we do it? When can we do it? When can we do it? Awesome. Get me Zach. Get me Zach. <laughs> and I want to see the rescue dogs next time. You have the, some rescue dogs, right? Yeah. Well, we, I, I said, just like, like your Rosie over there, we got a Perry boy. It could be, it could be uh, her brother. Oh, sure. man. Which, which Perry boy like. and Rosie. Perry boy and whole lot of Rosie. We got to make like a little, little yeah, is, he's uh, Rosie Spade, so no puppies, but I'm sure Perry boy. Perry Mason and you got a whole lot of Rosie. Going. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's right. Perry, Perry Mason. Duh. Why didn't I there think of that? Uh, Early on, yeah. So well, when you're out on the road, does do the dogs ever go out on the road with you? No. Uh, no. Nah. No. No. Nah. They ain't got that, you know. It, <laughs> they're going to be crapping on the bus and taking the <laughs> on the bus. That ain't going to be fun. I mean, we yeah. talked about it before, but now nah, it's just, you know. Yeah. Not yeah. Cool to everybody else. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> that, that would be some insanity right there. Well, I'm so happy to see you. I can't wait to see you guys out on the road. Hopefully, we'll get a Jersey date. Jersey date, New York date. It's all the same for us. Yeah, they'll all be up there soon. For yeah. Black Label. Uh, I don't think we'll be a Black Label tour without coming home to the Northeast and visiting us. And Zach, it's yeah, always I gotta go down and then go down to the boardwalk and hit Jenkinsons. Gotta hit Jenks, baby. Gotta do yeah. it Jersey style. Gotta hit Jenks. Gotta hit the whole, totally. you know, Midway oh, Stakes. Yeah, gotta get your steaks on the boardwalk. Asbury, Belmar, the whole nine yards. What's the, before I let you go, what's like the one thing that you, when you think, circle back to being, you know, a kid here in Jersey and 
hanging out in Jersey, you know, in all your formative years and growing up here and stuff, what's the thing that you love the most about being here? Yeah, obviously the Jersey shore, you know, yeah. going down the boardwalk and everything like that. And then uh, a great adventure, obviously. Yeah. That was always great. So, uh, Oh, I remember yeah, seeing I, shows I a blast, at Great Adventure. You know, yeah. That's in New Jersey. I had a blast growing up, uh, you know, all my friends and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, where we grew up, and then you had the roller skating rink, you had everything like that. So, uh, oh, it was definitely great. But skating at the rink to Leonard Skinner. You go along the boardwalk. You, you, I could smell the boardwalk, actually, right now, now that I'm thinking about it. I could, oh, I could some Zeppelis and stuff like that. Yeah. Without Everything mixed together. The steak sandwiches with the onions mixed with the Zeppelis mixed with the, the pizza. taffy. Yeah, the whole nine yards. It's without a doubt. Uh, hopefully it'll be all fired up again real soon. Sure. No more black box set. Zach Wild, I love you. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. And we cannot wait to see you. You got it, Tara. Take care. Tell everybody I said hey. Will do. Take care, Doc. KHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Karis Lock Company, your full-service locksmith, and Dover Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram on Route 46 in Rockaway. Online at doverdodge.com.